Right, welcome back to this tutorial series on algorithmic trading and investing with the Darwin API. In the last video, we covered extracting quotes from the Darwin Info API in particular, uh, accessing the endpoint slash quotes to get a historical time series of all quotes and timestamps for any particular Darwin or list of Darwins. Today, we're going to continue on from there and work with scores instead of quotes going into the slash history slash badges endpoint that allows us to get a historical time series of all Darwin investment attributes. Now, if you don't know what those look like, we can quickly go over to a particular Darwin, let's say Darwin NTI. And um, each Darwin has 12 uh, investment attributes, each of which has a historical evolution of the same. So you can visualize it on the platform uh, by clicking on any one of the investment attributes available to you. And for particular attributes, for example, the performance attribute here, you can see the evolution of this attribute over time. Through the Darwin API, you can access this same information via the slash badges endpoint that we will now attempt to access. The slash badges endpoint provides you a historical time series of all attributes itemized by timestamp at end of day. So when you call the endpoint, it takes only one parameter, the product name, returns to you a JSON object containing the following information. The first element in the response is a timestamp in milliseconds specifying the end of day for the particular row of values that you have following it. The second item is the D periods, up until this point in time, followed by an array that contains all the investment attributes from experience all the way through to capacity. That's experience, market correlation, risk stability, risk adjustment, open strategy, closed strategy, positive risk consistency, negative risk consistency, duration consistency, loss aversion, performance, and capacity. It is then followed by the D-score, and after that we have two additional uh, elements in this JSON object, per row, and that signifies the timestamp in milliseconds of the first calculation and timestamp in milliseconds of the last calculation. For the purpose of this tutorial and for future tutorials, for the present time, we will ignore these two elements. We'll focus purely on the millisecond timestamp at end of day and the values thereafter all the way to D score. Now, as you can see from the object itself, you have the first element, second element, followed by an array of elements, and then you have another element another two elements following it. So in order for us to construct this functionality in Python, like we did for quotes last time, we'll have to treat things slightly differently. I've added this code to the previous script. All of this code will be shared on GitHub shortly after the production of this video. And uh, here we've added an additional function similar to get historical quotes as we had last time. And that function allows us to extract information from this JSON object and parse it into a neat and tidy data frame that gives us a time series with all the attributes as features to work with using pandas in Python. Again, similar to our quotes function, we have uh, a list of symbols provided to the function. We have the endpoint, uh, a plot title. We're going to be plotting the quotes um, on a plotly chart as well, followed by a delay. Now it's important to remember that this code that is provided to you is built in a way so as to educate rather than to optimize lines of code. It is written deliberately in this manner to educate the viewer on the exact process for parsing this information into a neat and tidy data structure. There are much better, more concise ways of writing all of this code, of course, and it's, is, it isn't necessary at all to write a separate function for each endpoint. You may have one endpoint function that you can then write sub-functions in or additional functionality or parameterize the code in a manner that allows you to execute one function and achieve functionality for multiple endpoints. It's entirely up to you, uh, but for this code, please bear in mind that this is meant to educate, not to optimize the length of the code. So as we did with get historical quotes, we're passing all of this information in a list of our Darwins that we'd like to get score histories for. For that to happen, we have to first uh, create a header that mimics the header for the information we just saw on the API store for this endpoint slash history slash badges. And this is an element, element, array, element, element. Those last two elements will extract, but we won't be doing anything with at the present time. Going back to our code, we've now taken the end of day timestamp in milliseconds, D periods all the way through to capacity in D score, followed by the first calculation and last calculation timestamps. And this constitutes our header. 
We go through each Darwin in our symbols list as provided in the function header and start calling the endpoint for quotes his, uh, scores history for that particular endpoint. We start with an empty dictionary inside which we're going to populate values for data frames for each Darwin that we want data for. We'll then go ahead and call the API on the endpoint that we've specified in the arguments for the function, supplying the Darwin, processing a GET request with no additional parameters. Once the data has been received, these few lines of code then parse this information into a pandas data frame, converting any millisecond timestamps into human readable dates using pd.2 underscore date time. And once that's done, we assign the end of day timestamp, which is now in human readable date format, as the index of our Darwin's scores data frame. Once that's all done, we set off a little delay and loop through the remaining Darwin's in our symbols list. Once we've got all the data frames into our dictionary, we then output the dictionary. There's an additional little piece of logic here. If the user of this function has provided one Darwin in the list, then we go ahead and plot the data frame for that one Darwin as a plotly chart, and we'll exercise this right now. So the structure of this code, as you can see, is fairly simple. It isn't necessary to go ahead and write this many lines of code for extracting all of this information. There are much simpler, more com comprehensive, concise ways of doing this too, of course. But as I mentioned earlier, the purpose of this video is to educate the user on extraction, on how to go about thinking along the lines of getting this information into a data structure. And then from that point forwards, you can leverage the information in this code, use this code or optimize this code further to reduce it in size, improve speed and performance, etc. Let's now go ahead and create our Darwin Info API class and then try and execute this function to see what this data looks like for a list of Darwins or for a particular Darwin that we'd like to get information for. So we'll start off by, of course, first loading the script. Once the script is loaded, we're going to go ahead and create our object, which we'll call underscore info, and that will be an object of type DAWX Info API. Once again, as we discussed last time, because DWX Info API is the subclass of our main DWX API class, and that superclass calls our OAuth2 authentication functionality, creating an instance of DWX Info API will result in that OAuth2 functionality being called, our access and refresh tokens being retrieved, and then us being ready to call endpoints with our access token pre-embedded in our authorization header. So we don't have to do anything additional in terms of authentication. Now we know that our object is created and we're authenticated. We have our access tokens in hand. We can go ahead and simply focus on executing the queries that we'd like to do instead of focusing on anything else. So we'll start off with creating an object called underscore s and we'll assign it the output of our get historical scores function. And that will be executed like so. So we have two functions at the present time, quotes and scores. So we'll go to scores. And over here in our symbols list, for the time being, we'll supply, you can supply more than one, in which case you'll get a dictionary output. The keys of that dictionary will correspond to the symbols you've provided in this list of symbols. If you supply one Darwin, as I will for, for purposes of demonstration here, then you will get simply a dictionary with one output and you'll also get a plot uh, done for you automatically when you're executing this function in this manner. So NTI.4.12 is an example of a Darwin that we'd like to get scores information for. Once we execute this, we're going to call the API endpoint. That's going to retrieve all the information into um, the data frame. And it will also go ahead and plot this information on a plotly chart. Notice that the timestamps have been removed from being plotted and that part of the code is over here. When we pass the data to the Plotly function inside DWX graphics underscore helpers, a class that's also been provided to you. We simply go ahead and drop those columns, the first calculation, last calculation, D score and D periods prior to plotting the investment attributes that we're interested in visualizing on our chart. That looks like so. From this point forwards, there are multiple use cases for you to consider. You could conduct exploratory data analysis visually. If you spot any particular tendencies in the data immediately from taking a look at one or more time series here of scores over time, uh, you could remove some that are not immediately of interest to you or that don't change very much over time after reaching a certain point. So for instance, the EX attribute, once that's reached 10, it will not recede any further. So 
it's possible that you may not want to include that in your exploratory data analysis. There are other use cases that may come up. But by plotting the time series, each score on a chart in this manner, there are visual possibilities for conducting visual exploratory data analysis. Inside Python, we have our data inside the underscore s um, variable that we created for this purpose. The output of that function was sent to us in the form of a dictionary, each key in the dictionary being the Darwin and corresponding value being a data frame of the values that we requested. So as you can see here, all the columns here correspond to values obtained from the JSON output retrieved from the endpoint. We have D periods, experience, market correlation, all the way through to D score, followed by the first calculation and last calculation timestamps that for our purposes we're ignoring at this point in time. And that's pretty much it. So you can see from the example here that the nature, the structure of this code is quite similar to the one for the quotes function that we did in our last video. And that too, if we just execute that function for the same Darwin, that would look like so. Again, we supply the same symbols information with the same Darwin of interest, in this case, NTI.4.12. And we simply assign the output to our Q variable. Because it's one Darwin, it will also get plotted like our scores did. And here is the historical evolution of quotes over time for Darwin NTI. You'll also notice that the data available to you is uniform across both scores and quotes. So for instance, we have underscore s dot. Underscore s is a dictionary, so we want to get Darwin NTI from that list and take a look at its shape. And then we want to do the same thing for quotes. So as you can see, we have 1,760 records in both scores and quotes, and that allows you to do other sort of concatenation and merge related use cases with the data for the purposes of strategy development or other use cases. And that's pretty much it. So now we have code that allows us to get the two main data chunks for any particular Darwin, these being the quotes and scores. Of course, there's other data that's available to you via the Darwin Info API as well. Uh, one note in particular. In terms of backtesting, of course, functionality such as the one we've defined and coded in this script will help you perform a backtest. But when you run your strategy live and you want to retrieve the most recent values, you needn't call this particular endpoint. You can call the endpoint for the most recent values for the attribute in question directly. And this is available through the Darwin Info API as well. So for instance, if we're only interested in a few, a handful of investment attributes, and that is uh, a point in our trading strategy code where these values are checked prior to us making a decision. You don't have to call the historical endpoint. You can call the direct endpoint for that particular value. Via the slash products, slash product name, slash scores endpoint, you can get the most recent values for the investment attributes uh, that are available without extracting the entire time series. Hence the note on backtesting versus trading demo or live. If you're looking for the most recent values, call the slash scores endpoint. If you're conducting a backtest and would like to have access to historical data, then call the slash history slash badges endpoint. And that concludes this tutorial. So shortly after publishing it, we'll be uploading this code to GitHub where you can access this entire tree structure worth of scripts available to you. So obviously some of the folders will be empty, but the purpose of creating this tree structure is to sort of give people an idea on how to go about structuring their project, uh, how to go about thinking in terms of organization in an object-oriented fashion. And it also permits us to keep adding to the code over time, updating the code base in GitHub and allowing you to update your forks, etc. accordingly. As always, if you enjoyed this presentation, please do consider sharing it with your social networks, colleagues, coworkers, and friends. And do subscribe to the DarwinX YouTube channel so you remain up to date with all future videos that will be released in this series and other topics discussed on DarwinX. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.